Welcome back to Chair Shot Reality on WrestleZone.com at Josh Eisenberg for live and in living color after a great week of WWE in NXT action. It is now time for NXT in 90. NXT this past week was live from Brooklyn. We're going to talk about NXT TakeOver because that is what everybody is buzzing about. Johnny Gargano's loss on Andrade Cien Almas was a great kickoff to the match, uh, to the pay-per-view. But I do think Andrade Cien Almas moves up the ladder and is a great guy to put as one of your top three heels in NXT. Speaking of heels, Authors of Pain picked up a loss against another kind of heel team, right? Eh, kind of. Sanity are your new NXT Tag Team Champions. But Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly made one impact early and then make another impact later. But we saw Asuka and Ember Moon competing for the NXT Women's Championship, one of the best women's matches that I've seen at TakeOver from Ember Moon. And Asuka continues to reign supreme. She gets a collarbone injury, but I expect Asuka to keep it for six to eight weeks. Develop a tournament for the women. Give the women that aren't you being utilized right now an opportunity to get a championship match against Asuka when healthy. But the main event, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Roode, a bell-to-bell -bell physical confrontation. You saw the machine in McIntyre take out the glorious one in Bobby Roode, but it did not come after controversy because you saw the debut of Adam Cole, baby! He debuts, he aligns himself with O'Reilly, he aligns himself with Bobby Fish. The change, the future is now for NXT. NXT never ever rebuilds, but NXT always reloads. Let's send it in studio. Justin, your thoughts on Adam Cole and NXT. I was right here on this couch. Much magic was made. Over uh, over sixty thousand views. Thank you, everybody. I can't believe uh, watching that's Adam that. watching Adam Cole do impersonation and of course doing an interview with us. I did not do so on the impersonations. I know. I, I get it. Of course. Uh, I, I don't know how I survived that day. I think I was probably a little intoxicated. We're all. S <laughs> I was nervous. <laughs> you were nervous. Adam Cole. We should have had a behind the scenes camera on oh. this guy. Uh, we we were thinking about not telling him at all. But. Oh my god. So uh, invasion style, which uh, I'm glad it was it was with Red Dragon or whatever they're going to be called. I'm glad it was like that, and not just Adam Cole by himself. And I'm glad it wasn't just oh hottest free agent Adam Cole is sitting at ringside like everybody else. It yeah. made it seem special. Right, exactly. I, and I, you know, I, I didn't. I was. I, I thought that I didn't think they would do the ringside thing. I was like, that's just too anticlimactic. Yeah, he's you know? not Drew McIntyre. Sorry. <laughs> well, and that's not. To, or Bobby Roode, and that's not to take away from those but guys. But it's just, yeah, that, Adam Cole that's not the way to introduce. When, when there's when there's huge. as much speculation, right? When there's as much speculation and uh, uh, behind him as there was, yeah, you don't just have you don't just bring the guy out during a commercial or you know, during a break. And put, yeah, right, exactly. So the crowd. Uh, I like the invasion style. I thought it was definitely memorable. Um, they made an impact right away on a new champion and, and, and Drew McIntyre. Um, I, I guess you know we we talked about this with with Nakamura and Jinder previously about you know how long does Jinder hold it? You know, so what's, I mean. Adam Cole's being pushed right to the top automatically. Yep. So, and I think so the other thing is, whenever the Atami Elster Black match happened, they were talking about what well, the winner of this match might be in line to get that title shot. But sure. now that it's on Drew McIntyre as a face, and you would think Adam Cole probably overshoots the you know the other guys, and if he wins the belt, then you got a, a face and right. Elster Black to come up and go for it. Let's see. So they, the next the next takeover will be November. Yeah. So yeah. I have, think NXT's got a bright future immediately right now, even though they've lost so many guys. Oh yeah, they, they refreshed the talent depth, like crazy. Yeah, the, 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 Bobby Roode leaves. Adam Cole. Right. They, they've replenished their depth uh, quite well. I mean, I guess, you know, I know some people would still say the women's division, especially now with Asuka injured, that that's maybe still something that's not what it once was. It's, but I, think but I don't division, think it's in a bad shape. I think, I think the it's division just, based on everybody just trying to make their own character elevated just to get to Asuka yeah. is a great storyline and great for the whole division. Right. Having one dominant champion now that she's injured too, right. I, not to get off topic, she it's just awesome. Like, yeah. And I know Eisenberg has said it, and I and I, I echo his thoughts. Do not strip the title off of Oscar no. just because she's injured. I think you know there, there's there's a lot to be had whether it's a tournament to who gets to face her when she is healthy, or there's a lot to be had of crowning uh, an interim champ and then having that whole who's the real champ thing. So I want uh, her to please, please do not take that title. I off. want her to take it to Raw or SmackDown, and if she has to vacate it from then on, then she has to. But I don't want her to lose until maybe. I don't know if she ever loses. <laughs> I, I, I think she would be the one. I think she would be somebody to uh, venture into that territory of if she goes to a Raw or SmackDown in the next couple of months. Maybe let her pull a little bit of double duty because she and let, because that reign is so just powerful. like Kevin Owens did, but like, even more dominant. Did, when Paige debuted, did she was she still? In I'm not sure if she was still in. Well, she might have been. But but not regardless. I, I think she could. Same path. Oscar could pull some double duty, and I think again because of the dominance of the reign, it would be it would be appropriate that she do so, and I'm sure she can 
you know, make it work. Definitely, She's but yeah, a phenomenal um, athlete. NXT though, I mean, we're we're talking about it, and we, we seem so much more excited about this product with all these little storylines, and the Takeover pay per view was so much better than yeah. SummerSlam. Well, one thing I will say real quick in closing about, and this is again, the sh the NXT Takeover event was very good. There live, I thought it was very well. Uh, but I remember by by the time I got to Raw and SmackDown, I remember especially at Raw, I sat down at Raw and like I was somewhat exhausted. You know, they, they are long weeks. Have you ever been to them? I mean, they're fun, but they're long weeks with all the events. I think that definitely benefits Takeover. The fact that it's the number, it's the oh, first yeah. event. It, everybody's fresh. It's like a cruiserweight match on Nitro. Gets everybody hyped up. And by the <laughs> yeah. time we're at the third hour, you're like, I'm out. I'm yes. out. I don't want to watch Raw or SmackDown. Sorry. Oh, the cruiserweights. All right, at Juicy Steen on Twitter, at Justin Lavar, of course, again at Josh Eisenberg Four. We got more to come. Josh and I are going to do a little more debating as we wrap the weekend up here on WrestleZone.com.